Click. I'm out. All right, guys. I have a Remington Nylon 66 here. A lot of you ask me, send me emails all the time, ask me um, how I like the Nylon 66. Well, I could never really give you my honest opinion on them because I, I wasn't real familiar with them. Uh, my neighbor had one as I was growing up, and I shot it, shot his several times. He actually had a green one, and that's really cool, and I'll get to that here in just a minute. But I didn't own one, so I wanted to own one, and there was this uh, man with my job. I go to his house and work at his house probably once or twice a year, and this rifle was sitting in his gun cabinet, and I'd always walk by it, and I'm like, man, that's a nylon 66 there, and you know, first time I saw it about three years ago, and we got talking about it and stuff, and I asked him if he'd want to sell it to me, and he did not, so he didn't, he, every time I'd go to his house, I went to his house, like I said, twice a year, sometimes three times a year, asked if he wanted to get rid of that rifle, and finally, about six months ago, uh, out of the blue, he said, you, you, wanna, you still want that rifle? And I said, yeah, I, I would like it. And uh, he made me an offer, and I'm not going to tell you how much I gave for it, but he made me an offer that, you know, I couldn't refuse. So, uh, this one, this one's messed up a little bit. I've got to put one round in it and chamber the round and then load the rest of the uh, tubular magazine. Because um, when, if you load the whole magazine and on this particular rifle, uh, not all nylon 66, just this one, something's messed up with it. You try to, uh, when you load the whole magazine, you try to put it in, it, it tries to force two in there for some strange reason. But it's a 14 round tubular magazine, of course fed in the back, not down the barrel like your, uh, you know, your common, your Marlin Model 60s and some of your old Winchesters and other rifles also. Um, and I've got counted out lots of 14 here because if you put too many in here, you won't be able to get the rod back down. You, there's no indicator saying that you've filled it up, you know, to 14. So uh, instead of dumping more out on the table after filling them up, I've just counted out lots here of 14. But uh, this is, you know, you're also probably saying, why in the world are you using a scope? Well, uh, this one is the original scope that came with this package. They sold packages of these rifles uh, with the scope, and this is the original scope. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to have it on there. And plus, it doesn't have a front sight. You know, the guy, old man took the front sight off of it and uh, didn't know where he put it. So I'm going to order a front sight for it eventually. So let me shoot it a few more times. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. All right, I'm out. Uh, you probably saw those targets that I was shooting that, that was smoking in the air. Those were sent to me by Smoke'em Targets. Uh, those are really cool targets. Um, my kids love shooting those things. But the Nylon 66, it was actually, uh, they started producing these things in 1959, and they produced them all the way to 1989. And this, believe it or not, is the first mass-produced synthetic firearm, and uh, I guess rifle, maybe firearm. But I know it's the first mass-produced synthetic rifle. Uh, these things in the past 10 years have become highly, highly collectible. You know, this is what they call the Mohawk Brown. Now, this is the most common one. Even these right now are going between four and five hundred dollars in relatively good shape. Now, they didn't cost nowhere near that. You know, back in the day when they first produced these things. But like I said, they've become highly collectible. They also make a black. I think it's called a uh, Apache Black also referred to, I think, also the black diamond. Um, you know, you can really tell, you know, right here on the diamond, that's why it's called that. I think I'm telling you correct. But those will fetch between $800 and $1,000 on, uh, on a website or from a gun shop if you can find a black one. The rarest of all, like I mentioned before in the video, my neighbor had a green one. Uh, I think they're called uh, Seneca, Seneca Green or something like that. I forgot what it's called, but it's the green one. And man, I tell you what, those things are going for over $2,000 on some gun websites that I've seen. And you know, not that the rifles are any different. So they're, the, the mechanics are exactly the same. It's just the stocks are different color. But the green ones, they didn't make that many of them. And so they've become highly, highly sought after among shooters. So let me load up a few more here. While I'm talking, I didn't know where the name Nylon 66, uh, where it actually got its name. 
but uh, Remington, they hired, um, I guess, outsourced to DuPont, which DuPont's, of course, known for making plastics and all that other good stuff. And they said, hey, we need something, you build something strong enough that will hold up in a gun stock uh, for a rifle. And I think even the receiver's made out of plastic also, if I, if I recall correctly. I've never taken it apart and looked for myself, but I've read a few things that said the receiver's actually made out of plastic. It's just a metal housing on the outside of it. But, um, so they came out with a material, um, I forgot the name, Zytel or something like that, and it actually, uh, it's basically nylon. And it was, if you look at the chart, it's nylon six comma six. So Remington just took the comma off and called it the nylon 66. But over a million of these puppies were made, um, you know, 40 years and 40 years in production. And they're pretty good shooters. Um, they're, they're actually really accurate. Um, this scope is shooting low right, so I'm aiming high left. I don't feel like bothering changing the scope just for the review. Um, but it's, you know, I'm still hitting the targets and stuff. But, you know, it's a, it's a great rifle. The trigger is actually okay. It's, it doesn't, it breaks clean, but there's a lot of mush, you know, pulling it. But it's pretty light to be, you know, a mass-produced 22 rifle because sometimes you get some of these mass-produced 22 rifles and the triggers are horrible on them. But this one actually is not that bad. So, shoot a few more times. Flick. All right. Yeah, they're pretty cool rifles, you know. I'm not going to tell you to go out and rush out and buy one of these things because they have... They're, they're, they're pretty expensive. Like I said, I lucked up. I've always wanted one of these. I got it for a really good price. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, there's there's very, you know, there's still a lot of these rifles out because they made over a million of them. But the stocks, um, you know, over a period of time, plastic starts to break down and it starts getting brittle. So, unfortunately, when you find some of these stocks, they're broke or cracked. Um, I've seen a lot of them, you know, missing this whole section because what people usually would do is small game hunt shoot a rabbit or squirrel instead of putting another round in it they would go over and hit it you know on the back of the head or something to finish it off and instead of wasting a round well you could do that pretty much with the woodstock and be okay but with these plastic ones in the cold weather they would break and shatter so you know it was kind of you know you, you find a lot of them that all the pieces are not there but this is a nylon 66 i don't ever foresee this rifle you know leaving my collection and, you know it's an oldie but it's a goodie. If you ever get a chance to fire one, fire it. I think you'll like it. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all be safe and keep linking.